Howdy. Howdy, wonderful. Okay, we're finally on. Yeah, we did it. How you doing? I'm doing terrific. How about you? I'm doing pretty good. Had myself a nice filling lunch. Uh, you know, still still riding that wave of endorphins. How about yourself? Tremendous. Uh, so, what do you have? What do I have? Yeah. You mean argument wise? No, 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 no. I mean, oh, sorry. I thought you said what do you have, not what did you have. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, I had. Uh, I had. I had some good ass fucking. I had some bagels. Okay, uh, nice cream cheese, li lightly salted on the bottom. It was real good. I had some um, uh, 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 fucking lean cuisine uh, uh, mac and cheese. That shit's real tasty. I don't know. I don't know where they're hiding those calories because that shit is real tasty. And I had some pretzels. Got to have my pretzels. Got you. Wonderful. Terrific. What about? What about your lunch? My lunch. <laughs> I love the hesitation. That's wonderful. Uh, I have fried chicken and mashed potatoes. Nice. Pretty damn good. All right. Um, so before we get started, would you mind describing your political predilection to the audience? Just so uh, I uh, can't be accused of misrepresenting what you believe in. Sure. So... I identify as a paternalistic conservative, which is just a fancy way of saying I'm a collectivist conservative on the social axis, as well as a socialist on the economic uh, sense. Mm -hmm. now, now, I just vaguely call myself a socialist just because it makes it easier. You know, you're talking on the street. Most people don't understand the word national syndicalist or mm -hmm. the people that do, you know, automatically assume, ah, Mussolini, fuck. And so the, the conversation gets muddled. Uh -huh. So I, I, I would just pretty much call myself a conservative socialist. Gotcha. But you would, you would also feel fine calling yourself a national syndicalist if people interpreted that definition correctly? If it was interpreted in the literal sense and not the syncretic uh, euphemism for fascism, sure. Oh, because when I Google the term, it says part of a series on fascism. Um, this, is a, this is a specific definition that I guess you're probably more familiar with than I am. Um, but it, it seems like, it, at least as the literature that I'm looking at now, it is like pretty heavily associated with, um, with fascism. But you're not, you don't consider yourself a fascist? It would be like, it's sort of an incremental difference? Right. So I'm a syndicalist, but I believe in economic nationalism. Okay. So uh, I quite literally interpret it by the literal wording of how it's identified. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. So like, a okay. So, I mean, I guess that would kind of be like national socialism, right? I mean, that would technically be like the, the, the most implicit way of describing those beliefs. Right. Cause you're a socialist, well, but you like the nation is very important. So like that you'd kind of literally be that, right? Literally speaking, yes, but not in like a, you know, German workers party kind of nonsense. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. I was just curious. I just don't want to be uh, accused of misrepresenting you in the future. So, um, yeah, I'm obviously just a um, market socialist, but I'm also an anarchist. You know, we run down that line. Uh, everyone's got, uh, you know, gas stations to stop at on their way to paradise. But, um, yeah, um, so... I was originally interested in this debate because I've never heard of somebody with your particular political leanings. Um, but I got more interested, I think, the longer I waited because um, the uh, uh, your your Insta has some um, some wild shit um, on it uh, at, at the moment. Um, I mean, we talked like, a, I think, a week ago when you came on. I was playing Resident yes. Evil. We talked for a second. But since that talk, I think it's only been since you have been like non-stop calling me a pedophile like relentlessly like it's been like i don't i don't know much about instagram so i don't know the technical term but it's been like the the story like if i click on it like i would see and i some of this is on stream so they can confirm but it was stuff like um like vosh to pedo destroy that pedo vosh um there was one where you guys all you and your friends like photoshopped your heads onto a bunch of police officers and they were arresting a perp and the perp had my face and i was saying like but i thought she was 18 and that kind of stuff you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a little bit weird because you've been really kind and reasonable um, over email, but 
in on Instagram, you have been literally like engaging in some of the most heinous misrepresentation of my beliefs imaginable. Interesting. Yeah, I agree. It is pretty interesting. So why have you been doing that? <laughs> well, you know, it's actually uh, quite simple uh, in reality. Mm hmm. Uh, the whole Vosh is a pedo, if you don't know, which, you know, you are Vosh. I am. So I would figure that you would know this. The Vosh is a pedo is a meme. It is a meme. And do I know if you're actually a pedophile that engages in, you know, uh, amorous activity with children? No. But it is a meme. So it's a meme that you have posted about a dozen or more times over the past week and engaged in group jokes about how I'm a pedo with your other content creator friends, and you've had people in the comments saying, yeah, destroy that pedo Vosh. It doesn't really seem like a meme, and it just seems like you're making an accusation you know you can't defend, so you're backing off of it now. You know? Oh, absolutely not, because um, I have not told these people to say this. This is genuinely... A meme that is quite universal amongst uh, the Instagram and YouTube community, respectively. Okay. Uh, lots of people hold this, you know, uh, meme this meme. In regard. Yes, it is a meme. Well, normally when I see that um, really funny meme, uh, it's usually in Nazi communities. They tend to be the groups that throw that at me the most um, because their leaders have no arguments and every time they step up to me, they get destroyed. So then they kind of like, they kind of like, they know they can't actually attack my positions. So they run back and they like, they're like, oh, it's just a meme, bro. And of course, everyone who's ever actually come on here to um, like attack me on that issue uh, has ended up like backing off of it. So it seems like it's just a really weaselly and dishonest way of drumming up like hate against me. You know? Do you believe that I believe you're a pedophile? Uh, I don't really know or care what you believe. What I care is the things that you say and the responsibility that you have to be dishonest with your audience. Do you think it would be particularly funny if I, with my audience, with 4,000 people watching and tens of thousands of people who watch every day, started making a bunch of jokes about how you were a pedophile without ever clarifying that it was a joke? You didn't seem to mind it much when you did uh, accuse me of peddling an ideology in the way you described paternalistic conservatism. Yes. You described it as, oh, it's just a conservative that wants to rape women. So your, your, um, your statement then is that you feel justified in calling me a pedo over and over again because at one point I called you a rapist. Uh, I actually have the context for that. I can, I can throw it up here real quick uh, because in it's- calling me a pedo. Ooh. Oh, that's actually your live feed. Over right? and over goodness. again one second. At one point, I called you a rapist. Uh, I, actually... I wish I knew how Instagram worked. Just a second. Yeah, okay. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it then if you're live streaming. But I can just say it right now. So I was reading your um, uh, described political positions. And one of them said um, uh, it was paternalistic conservative. And I made the joke while reading through it. Um, oh, yeah, that means a conservative who wants to rape women. Because paternalistic, you know, in the colloquial sense, can also refer to the male authority figure, um, which, you know, like if we'd said like, this is a paternalistic society, there are, are interpretations of that that could lead to like, it being like a patriarchal one, for example. So that was the joke that I was making. I didn't call you a rapist. I didn't make a bunch of jokes about how you were a rapist. I didn't tell anyone that you were a rapist. I didn't disseminate any information about how you uh, like raping people. Uh, I was just kind of like an offhand joke. I think that you've engaged in a much greater degree of, um, you, you know, like irresponsible uh, 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 messaging with this. Hmm. Interesting. So when you read it involving like myself and you said such a thing, would that not make it indicative of me who does possess this ideology in their mind? Would that not make it indicative of me to be a rapist if that was true? So do you think that me reading the term paternalistic conservative and then saying, ha that means you want to rape people, and then going through and never mentioning it again, is the same as you making dozens of very serious comments about how I'm a pedophile with an audience egging on the idea that I'm a pedophile while you Photoshop like images about how I'm a pedophile with your friends? Do you think like those are equivalent? Well, I'm certainly not going to take responsibility for images I have not photoshopped. As a matter of fact, it has been friends of mine that have done that. That you've but put on your story. Yeah, that you've put on your story. I have reposted them on my story. I find them quite funny, actually. 
And, you know, uh, the individuals who made them are friends of mine. Okay, well, all right, so it's just a meme, and you're not responsible for jokes that your friends make, even if you rehost them on your channel. I gotcha. Um, the, and this, the, this is the last thing I'll say, though. It, it is funny, yeah. This is the last thing that I'm going to throw out there. So I'm not the only person who's super curious about uh, why you keep calling me a pedophile, because one of my uh, fans messaged you, and uh, they asked, can I ask you why Vosh is a pedophile? And unprompted, you responded by sending them a naked picture of me that I have tactfully censored out for the benefit of my audience, uh, completely unprompted. I don't know where you got this image of me. Um, I know that I posted my nudes on Discord. I don't know if you searched for them there or you found it somewhere else. And um, it turns out the person you sent this pornography to was 16 years old. Um, which when you were made aware of that, you said, I mean, you DM'd me. And then when they said, hey, I think that might be illegal, you called them a retard. So that's, you like funny jokes. Uh, this is pretty funny too. In a conversation about how I'm a pedophile, you sent pornography to a minor. That's really interesting. Is that funny to you or is it just me? Well, it's funny that you don't realize that I'm a minor and that you would bring this up and get to the most important issues in this debate. Um, I very much respect that, that you're prioritizing, you know, based on the most important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I like I like ascertaining sort of the moral character of the people that I debate um, because it, it tells me how I should act. Um, I like knowing if they're going to act in good or a bad faith. But ju judging like the juxtaposition between your behavior over email and your behavior on Insta, um, I think you're like a weaselly, spineless little snake. Um, so with that being said, and I guess that's all the forward we need, we can go ahead. Let's let's talk politics, my man. Uh, what 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 do you got? What what issues do you take with my uh, with my political beliefs? So uh, you have agreed to all five topics. All right, and I want to run through this again to make sure that you are still in agreement. Mm -hmm. Immigration. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Sex work. Yeah, sure. Alcohol prohibition. Sure. Bernie or bust. Yeah, why not? And trade. I didn't trade. Yes, trade. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm I'm good for all of those. I feel uh, I feel prepared. All right. What do you What do you want to start with? So let's start with immigration, which is the central issue that I brought to your attention. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to make an opening statement or do you want me to go ahead? Uh, yeah, sure. So there are, there are a, um, there are a ton of ways that I can approach this. Like morally as an anarchist, I believe that individuals have the right to like freedom, like freedom of movement. I think it's heinous that a person could be locked onto a planet and like not be able to see most of it because everyone's closed off their borders for some like esoteric political reason. But even if we're going to speak only selfishly, immigration overall helps the economy of the United States. It helps the culture of the United States. As per my cultural beliefs, I quite like the diversity within my country. I believe it enriches us, broadly speaking, li literally and, you know, figuratively. And uh, what's more, um, all of the evidence suggesting that immigration disproportionately hurts a small, you know, group of, of people with regards to their wages um, seems to be extremely overinflated. Even anti-immigration authors have have uh, consistently failed to demonstrate uh, um, uh, that there is like a substantial economic harm done to any part of our population. So overall, good for our economy, good for our culture, morally just. That's my position on immigration. Terrific. So <clears throat> let's get into this. I believe the way we do immigration in the United States is a form of importation of slavery. I believe that workers in this country have had their dignity stripped from them and forced to sell their labor for a substance wage and that dr drastically undercut them in their personal value mm -hmm. and in their value in the job market. The job market is already as tremendously, tremendously clogged as it is. It is very hard to find certain jobs, especially when we teach our children to pursue, pursue what they want to go after. Mm -hmm. And so I believe policies such as free college, Medicare for all, 
stuff like that. That can help the job market, and we can forcibly open up the market as a four-people government to ensure that the people who need fulfillment in society get it. And a lot of those people who are hung out to dry are our own people. So I would completely agree, completely dis with any sort of importation of these wage slaves to a life we could never promise them and never truly live up to our American creed to begin with. Yeah, okay. So, so there were three main points that you made there. Uh, the first is that, wor I'll address them one by one. So first of all, workers are forced into slavery. Um, while I agree that wage slavery is morally abhorrent, this is the case all across the world. Um, I don't, like, it's, it's not like immigrants are being forced into America to be wage slaves, but if they stayed in Mexico, they would all be like co-op owners, you know? So it's like, that seems completely irrelevant to like the broader question of immigration. You say our job market is clogged. Um, I don't think this is the case. Right now we're working with very, 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 very low unemployment. That's true. But there are some sectors that are still looking for very specific groups of people. And what's more, the more immigrants you bring into the country, the more jobs you need. After all, more people means you need to grow more food, means you need to build more houses, needs you mean to repair more television sets, means everything, more managers, more employees, everything. So bringing in immigrants doesn't like choke up the last like few percentage points of the unemployed. All it does is b widen the pie. It makes the pie bigger. Um, it doesn't necessarily have like an adverse or a positive effect on unemployment because immigrants tend to fit pretty proportionally into the pre-existing uh, um, like employed unemployed dichotomy. And the last thing you said, I think is the most telling. You said our own people. I don't know what the fuck you mean by our own people. I don't identify with the people of my country any more than I do with the people of the rest of the world. I have far more in common with a worker over in Sri Lanka than I do with Jeff Bezos here. No matter where we're born, we're all people. Um, I mean, obviously, I don't. I, there's a language barrier with a lot of the rest of the world. But like fundamentally, on a, like a cultural level, um, yeah, like I like everyone is my people, and I don't think there's any excuse whatsoever to locking off our borders when it seems to be detrimental to us and to the rest of the world. All righty, so let's let's get into exactly what you said. So a, a lot of this is right-wing dogma. You know, it's been espoused by many anarcho-capitalist, you know, economists that, well, if we have the free movement of people, then naturally this is going to boost growth. And guess what? The job creators, the billionaires, have to come out and they have to create more jobs because, oh my Lord, they really, really care about the people this is blatantly not true. As a matter of fact, um, there's a lot more incentive to hire these immigrants over natives because, for one, immigrants, as you know, you, you briefly mentioned it with the language barrier on the left. <clears throat> well, that's everywhere. And this language barrier can ap actually help them if they come here. If they know more than one language, which a lot of them do, you know, we're starting to have a lot more tests uh, done in English, as far as, you know, our immigration system. And so they have to use more than one language sometime. You can't read the stop sign without knowing it says stop. You'll go to jail. And so a lot of times this bilingual advantage really does come into play as far as these immigrants. As a matter of fact, one of the people you have cited in the past, Giovanni Perry, has made this exact claim. He argued that bilingual employees can earn anywhere between 5 to 20% more money per hour than those who speak only one language, which would be the majority of the natives in this country. Okay, I have no... Okay, I, I don't care if bilingual people make more money than monolingual people. It's generally pretty useful to know two languages. I mean, if you're in America, if you know Spanish, that can open up a lot of opportunities um, in, from a wide variety of social work to field work to just generally being able to get around a little bit better. Um, but I'm not making that argument. I don't really care. Um, I can tell that you don't actually have any like data to support your points here because everything that you like, this is this is the absolute height of like a meaningless uh, like dog whistling. So you claim it's right wing dogma to 
believe in the free movement of people across borders? No, it's fucking not. That's a component of liberal thought since the Enlightenment that came alongside ideas like democracy and freedom. I don't know how you feel about those things that are broadly um, lauded and written of by many leftist academics. I don't know if you know this, but communism is a classless, stateless society. It does not have borders. Believe it or not, it is not right-wing thought to believe that a world without borders is a good world. I am an anarchist. As a stateless society, this is the highest form of border abolitionism. Secondly, you made this very <laughs> weird straw man claim billionaires will create more jobs out of kindness. First of all, billionaires don't create jobs. Jobs are produced through market need in a capitalist economy. And second of all, there is a greater need for those jobs if more immigrants come in here. Why would a capitalist economy, which thrives off of an increase in labor, which is a resource, not make more jobs to accommodate the increase in population? Like, th like this is meaningless. Like, if what you were saying was true, then uh, uh, the baby boomers, when we had a population boom back during the 1950s and 60s, uh, that like they all would have been homeless and unemployed because the, the economy couldn't expand to keep up with their entering the job pool. It's, it's nonsense. It has nothing to do with kindness. It's just a thing that happens. And then you made the argument that they can't read the stop signs. I would, while I do generally agree that people in this country should be able to speak English, that's generally a very helpful thing. The idea that a people not being able to speak English is some like devastating, uh, uh, like uh, um, uh, uh, consequence to immigration that's hampering our economy and society is pretty ridiculous. They can read stop signs just fine. It's a big red sign. It's designed to be readable even if you don't speak English. I mean, it, like, uh, like that's why they have similar stop signs in other countries. We pretty much get along here. And if you've lived in a diverse area, you know that people who don't speak English are still perfectly <coughs> capable of getting around, contributing to the economy, and being good citizens, paying their taxes and what have you. Um, they might not go to the same, you know, social events that you and I are going to, but they're Americans, and I respect their right to be here. So I noticed that you're doing this very skittish thing. Where you can't exactly pick what kind of economy you want. So let, let's get down to it. You have argued for an anarchist socialist economy broadly, right? Uh, yeah, from time to time. But most of the time when you argue immigration like you just did, you are talking about it in the contemporary sense that it is good for our economy, like right now as a capitalist oligarchy that we are. And so you're doing this thing where you're jumping around and you can't exactly decide what it's good for. Well, it's good for it's good for everything. So when we're talking about policy <laughs> stuff, what well, is? If we're talking about policy decisions like opening up our borders, that's something that I want to talk about like now, like how would that affect us now? Like our country exists now, you know? Um, in which case the evidence clearly suggests immigration is good for our current economy. Um, the evidence also seems to suggest this would continue to be the case in a market socialist economy, which is the next stage of society that I want to move us to. And an anarchist society doesn't have borders, so it's kind of a meaningless question there. There is no form of society today that I would argue immigration hurts. Uh, maybe there are some very, 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 very select slivers of the population that are negatively affected, but I think we can compensate for that with redistributive policies rather than hurting everybody by not keeping, you know, by not keeping the Browns out. <laughs> Blended, and I really love that straw man you did at the end about the whole Brown thing. You know, really stick it to me, man. I appreciate your competition, but let's get back to the subject. Oh, well, that's well, wait, just really quickly, because I don't want to mischaracterize you. Are you saying so there's no ethno nationalist component of your beliefs? Absolutely not. So you so if OK, that's fine. I mean, I don't have to use that language. I do. I mean, I've argued with like Nazis before, so I've heard a lot of these talking points. But um, when it comes to like the brown person comment, so you would not mind whatsoever then if um, through legal immigration, uh, Mexicans or, or fucking Arabic people or whatever eventually supplanted whites as the dominant, you know, like group in this country. That wouldn't bother you at all? No, it's not a racial thing. It's an economic thing. Okay, because, well, that's bad for you because the economics on this question are settled. If you want to make the racist argument <laughs> that it's better when white people are away from brown people, that, then, like, there's room to discuss. Like, we would have to, like, that's a more nuanced question. But the econ one is, is totally settled. It, it, it's settled amongst right-wing economists. I would agree with you there. But it's not settled amongst me and everyday America. I've... See, even you yourself, I have watched you, Vosh. You have not consistently argued for what you're doing right here. You have even admitted that sometimes people get left out to dry in this economy. You know, you look at it, 
91% of the population holds down a job. 58.3% of those people don't even make $10 an hour. And once before, you have claimed that, oh, it'll raise the minimum wage. Oh, my God, just look at wage. The wages in this country are so stagnant. stagnant. It is so unbelievable. What does that, that have, have to do with immigration? Not just those people. Excuse me? What does that have to do with immigration, though? That has to do with immigration because the job market is so competitive in this country with the lack of schooling that we're able to give to our own people. You know, wait, and it's I, wait, I don't know. Too. Why are you making apologies for the bourgeois? The market doesn't set wages. The bourgeois does. The reason why wages haven't gone up isn't because there have been more people here. It's because our weakling politicians haven't been fighting for the rights of workers. Why not just stand up and fight for everyone's ability to get a higher wage? Why do this weird, like, maybe if the population proportionally goes down, that'll fix the issue? I, I, I don't know if that would, like, do anything. <laughs> Okay, so I'd like to repeat what you said so I didn't miss it. Mm -hmm. Can you please repeat what you said oh, so I didn't oh, miss it? Oh, yeah, sorry. I thought, you said, I thought you said you were going to repeat. Yeah, absolutely. So the, um, the, the immigration, I don't think... Now, there was a correlative relationship between immigrants and the, the decline of wages here in the country, but I would make the argument that that's just because there's been the, um, the hyper-modernization of our economy and the transition to a service economy has made it so like labor owners have like an easier time uh, depriving their workers of decent wages, dropping union, union rates. Um, I have not seen any evidence to suggest that bringing in more immigrants like drops wages across the board there's there in fact i can tell you definitively there's no evidence for that and i can cite you studies indicating that immigration waves actually increase wages for the majority of the country yeah and i've actually looked at your uh, citations there you can save your breath oh, uh the person nice. that made this very claim about bilingual employees was one of your own citations giovanni perry who was a uh, laborist, you know, economist, and he did many studies on this, actually. But even him himself, it, it's weird that in every single study that somebody like you would cite, there is something in there that completely contradicts everything you just said. Oh, what, what about my point, source? Yeah, please, please, I'm interested. Right, so he argued that the bilingual employees can earn anywhere from 5 to 20%, and that disproportionately falls on those immigrants. And so that's a lot of people here who don't have access to that higher education to be able to get the resources necessary to be on equal standing as far as the job market. Wait, 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 wait. What you just said to me is wrong. The people who get hurt the hardest by immigration are former immigrants. The bilingual people you're referring to are not the people who are winning out here. Most immigrants are going to be bilingual if they come to this country, so they can understand this country and their home country's language, for the most part, unless they're from Britain or Canada or whatever. Um, this has nothing to do with the broader claim that, um, on average, wages rise with, you know, with, um, with immigration. So, if you look at it, a union worker, for example, a union worker makes 22% more than your average work, right? Mm -hmm. Would you agree with this? Uh, yeah. So a lot of those people that you're talking about bringing in, you know, they're coming in on their visas and a lot of undocumented people are overstaying those visas. So they're obviously here to work. They're not here to, you know, soak up welfare or anything. It's not a right wing talking point. You know, we're not going to get into that demagogue nonsense. But these people have to sustain some sort of income. And so what are you to do when you have a competitive job market like that? And you only have a, you have to tie a certain number to like the jobs we actually in, have in real time. You know, those people coming here, they have to pick some kind of job or else, guess what? Like any other wage slave, you starve. And so what I'm saying is when you bring in lots of people like Donald Trump has, you know, he's increased work visas by 7.2%. And, you know, a lot of these people are not the people who are going to unionize because they're temporary. Wait, wait, wait. So we've moved so far. So, okay, so you're conceding the point that immigrants, like, hurt wages across the board. It's factually correct that they don't. Um, if we move to this new claim, you're making the argument that it's bad to have visa workers in because they won't unionize? But... Boss, you, you brought up zero numbers. 
Uh, you have oh, oh, wait, I thought you said you looked at my data. Oh, sure, if you want me to just dogpile you with the data, I would be more than happy to. It's much easier than having to interpret your arguments. Um, yeah, so we can look at that. Uh, while I'm scrolling down to that section, yeah, so can you can you explain to me, like, the exact argument that you're making here? Um, so you're saying, like, it's bad to have immigrants in here because they don't unionize, but, like, nobody's unionized right now. Union membership has absolutely plummeted. So that's not just an immigrant thing. That's an everyone thing. Um, also, well, you can be a part of a union. immigrants because they're temporary. The citizens but, here can unionize. They have every reason to. Immigrants can unionize. They, like, they can. There's nothing but preventing they them. they rarely do. If you look at the empirical data, they don't. Yeah, they don't because nobody problem. does. <laughs> Why don't we just push for more uh, immigrant unionization then? That'd be good, wouldn't it? It'd be great if everybody could get a job, then we can allow him. But, you know, wait, wait, I just said, wait, I said, wait, I said unionization, not jobs. So why, why don't we just push for more unionization amongst immigrants then? I mean, we can do that. You don't agree with more jobs? Well, sure, we can get, well, yeah, we get more jobs when we bring more immigrants in here. So, yeah, I'm in favor of that. Let's get more immigrants so we get more work, so we get more jobs, and we can increase union membership. Yes, but what, what you have said earlier, you know, you accuse me of being... Uh, beholden to the bourgeois, you know, it, it, it would seem that it is actually you who would look at this and say, well, then the market, you know, they can recognize that this movement of people is coming. We got to give them jobs because we want to improve our economy. We want to, we want to raise tax revenue and all that good, all that good jazz. Right. Well, so sure. Yeah. This, yeah. yeah okay. So what's the issue? So the issue is that when you actually bring about those that amount of people, you really do divvy up the job market, and that can't well, exactly wait. No, happen wait again. No, you you no, 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 you 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 don't. <laughs> There's no data. If you could, if you could find me. So here we go. Let's. I mean, we can go over it right here. Here we go. I've got the data right in front of me. This is a highly respected study um, that has been cited by many economic journalists. I don't know if like everyone is right wing, therefore we can't trust any data. But if we take a look at the average percentage wage change due to immigration from 1990 to 2004, during which we had a significant ramp up in the amount of illegal history. Hispanic immigrants who came to this country, so this is worst case scenario, because these people don't even have SSNs. We get, for um, a low estimate specification, the average is 2.3%, medium 1.8%, and high 1.2%. Even the most um, uh, 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 strenuous data collection seems to indicate that on average, there's a slight wage increase to the average American. Now, the people who are hurt by the immigration are other immigrants, because there is not a perfect level of replaceability between native workers and immigrant workers, meaning that often new immigrants will replace old immigrants. But I'm pretty sure if we look at the average immigrant's life after coming to the United States, they would probably prefer to be here working in America in a position where next waves of immigrants could conceivably hurt their income than they would be in their home country. That's why they decide to come here. So it helps literally everyone. The only group of people, the only group of people who are hurt even slightly are high school dropouts born in the United States at negative 0.2%, which goes up over a longer period of time. So I just, again, like for me, this isn't really an ideological thing. This is just like a facts-based thing. Like I, like for me to deny the plurality of this data would for me to become a demagogue. I would have to be delusional to believe that immigration hurt the economy like looking at these numbers so you you are citing a very broad uh study mm -hmm. to which you have like strictly given me just their you know consensus on the issue uh, but let's actually go and look by case by case you know you look at let's say north carolina smith do you have data on Target, this case north by carolina. case or just like anecdotes this is not an anecdote because it's not my personal experience. That anecdotal evidence doesn't have to be from your personal experience. It can just be like an unsubstantiated. No, this is an objective fact. Okay, so let me clarify, just so we don't have to waste any time. There are segments of our economy that are hurt by immigration. It seems to be high school dropouts for the most part. But I think we can address that with other redistributive forms of economic policy because it helps everybody else. And high school dropouts are a pretty small percentage of the population. Hmm. Interesting. But a lot of these immigrants are actually not taking up the jobs of very college educated people. You know, they're working in the agricultural. That's the reason Cesar Chavez, you know, <clears throat> gained such much, 
such prominence in California. Yeah, and they tend like to take low-skill jobs. Sure. And, that, and that's where they're going to fly out of them. And unfortunately, with those high school dropouts, they're not going to get very much about that. You kind of hung yourself on that one. What? Wait, what? Wait, I've said high school dropouts <laughs> lose out like a fraction of a percentage point of real wages. Wait, what do you mean? Okay, so you conceded to me. Wait, what am I? Wait, what have I conceded to you? you if you let me finish, you conceded to me that illegal immigrants are taking up these low skill jobs in which low skill, you know, if you were to look at it, I think high school dropouts would be included in that. And so that's a lot of people being displaced because of this immigration. No, it's not. You know, you look at, yes, it is. No, it's not. That's why the high school dropout was the smallest number of people whose education, like receipts were tallied. It's a very small group of people, like relative to the broader population. You realize when we're talking about economic policy, we have to work off averages, right? Like we can't say like, oh, this policy could hurt, like help the whole country, but it would hurt Timmy over there. Like, oh, look at poor Timmy. Like, we, we can't do that, you know? Like, here's an example. Wait, okay, here's an example. Okay, what if, okay, we were in a classroom, okay? And there are 30 students, and two of the students come back to the class, and they've got a fuck ton of candy bars. And for some reason, okay, for some reason, um, oh, I get it. Two of those kids are, like, uh, 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 lactose intolerant. They can't have the chocolate bars. But they've got a fuck ton of chocolate bars. So it's like, okay, we're going to give chocolate bars to everyone except for Susie and Tim. And everyone else gets a bunch of chocolate bars. And it's like, that's fucked up. Why are two people missing out while everyone else gets a benefit? But then one of the 28 other students can just take their apple and their and their their little like granola bar and give it to Susie and Tim. And that way, everyone benefits, even the people who lost the apple and the granola bar. That way, like there's a net benefit and we compensate for the small segment that didn't get anything. Wow, that's a very right wing way to measure the economy. What, yeah, is it? <laughs> what does that mean? It means that you're looking at the way MSNBC and Fox no, News... No, no, specifically outline. Right? No, 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 no. Quit, quit. I get it. It's very impressive with your Instagram circle jerk buddies. Like, oh, this is right-wing thinking. Why don't you tell me what I said specifically that's incorrect? Because so far, right-wing seems like a dog whistle for correct but inconvenient to you. Which is not what... And that's not what I use right-wing for. <laughs> okay, so you've talked about tax revenue you've talked about wait 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 and wait wait answer the question wait 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 how is it right wing logic how is it right wing logic when you look at unemployment that's people holding down a job but that's not people holding down a living wage and it seems you really don't yeah, except give a shit except about immigration this. increases average wages so what's your next you, point you even told me no excuse, you even told me that these people who are bilingual, which is most of the immigrants I never here, mentioned the, lingua, the bilingual thing you did. I don't know that data. I, it probably that, that's defeats your point, too. Not true. I never mentioned... No, you were the you, first one to bring up the bilingual you. thing. <laughs> Listen, man, you're flailing. Okay. And wait, how is it right-wing? Wait, wait, I really want to know, because you can't, you can't keep getting away with not knowing something and then being smug about it, okay? It reminds me of my argument with Sargon. So, you're the one who brought up the bilingual thing. I'm sure it's an interesting data point. I, again, I didn't bring it up. Okay, so, again, what did I say with a little example that I just gave about how everyone wins due to immigration that is right-wing? You talked about tax revenues, and before no, I was when talking about wages, further, not tax. I was talking about wages. Wages go up. Oh, you mentioned tax revenues. No, I, I don't think I've said the word tax one time in this discussion, but that's okay. We miss here sometimes. I was talking about wages. All those kids in the class get additional wages. It's mathematically the case. Are you sure it's not a race thing? <laughs> Damn, dude. Wait. That, that's pretty piss poor that you would really go back to that after I've just explained it to you. Man, you, you call me, just, dude, you, you call think. me a pedophile like 30 times before we talk here, okay? And and you're coming here, you came here so fucking smug, and you're lost on every single point you're trying to so throw what, my way. So you're gonna whine and bitch about it now because you're not fucking winning? You j <laughs> so as I was asking, um, Let's get back and what to exactly is, what exactly is out, right wing about the logic that I employed. I've asked you this like five times now. It is right wing to assume that unemployment 
I never mentioned Here's employment. Here's the way you should measure. I if never mentioned did. employment. We the the analogy jobs, I gave jobs, was about the existing native workers getting higher wages if immigrants come in. I didn't mention taxes. I didn't mention unemployment. If I wanted to, I'd win on those points too. But I'm trying to stay really that focused on the wages. That is 110% bullshit because it's the very first thing that you said. I wrote it down. You mentioned that unemployment is low in this country, in which you conceded to Donald Trump. I'm sure he'll thank you with one of his stakes. It is currently but low. Unemployment. Yes, that's a fact. Underemployment is very high, but unemployment is low. You were the one who brought up unemployment first. That is not true. Because <laughs> you went first, and that was one of you said. So, one more time, before I give up on this. How exactly was my school, child, 30 kids in a classroom, chocolate bar analogy, right-wing logic? It had to do with the wages and the distribution of said wages, not taxes or unemployment. How is that right-wing? It is right-wing to assume that because an average out of a very, you know, controlled group of people in which, you know, these studies very closely analyze control groups that they would love to, you know, have as little pet. Uh, groups that they like to keep right there so that way they can watch it and it just looks right for them. Wait, are you suggesting, exactly wait, 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 do you did. have evidence for the claim that this researcher you biased their, um, their survey or like data collection results to favor like a particular outcome? Or are you just completely making that up because the data is, is really inconvenient to you? No, the averages were of the general population, a huge number of people, a huge number a of people. When you do a study, you have to pick a certain group of people. You're not That's picking how the entire all stuff. Wait, so you disagree with the concept of a study then? Because all of them will have to rely on 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 sample sizes that they're you refer a population to. Listen, friend, they're not picking the homeless out of their shelters to come do these surveys. These no, the no, no, well the home, no, 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 because some of those homeless are high school dropouts. Some of them are high school graduates. Some of them are college graduates. They fit within the broader data purview. Not only do you not have any data to indicate that homeless people are disproportionately affected by immigration, you don't even seem to understand the basics of data collection. So all data that we ever collect on any economic issues is going to use a sample size to refer information back to a population. It is an entire field of study to be able to do this effectively, and I know because that was my field of study. Those people are sociologists, and they take high-level stats courses so they can specifically learn the millions of tiny ways in which you can collect data and have it end up biasing the results. This is something that I am literally academically qualified to do, and I can tell by listening to you talk about it that this is an excuse for you to run away from a problem you don't have a solution to, rather than you actually actually disagreeing with the methodology of the data collection. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. I love I love how you speak. It's just wonderful to hear. It's music to my ears. So uh, let, let's actually get into the home. Uh, so we're just going to move off that again, are we? Okay. Hey, listen, it's really clear to no, me. You, you didn't come. Hey, hey, that's so okay. I, I no, no, it's okay. It's okay. I'm sorry. This is my fault. I went too hard on you. It's very clear. Immigration is not your strong suit. Do you want to move to the next point? What was it? Prohibition? Sex work? <laughs> Because we can, I mean, I really we can do this all fucking day, bro. But if you have no data to back up your points, then that's like, I'm going to get bored, like telling you you're wrong over and over again. We can move to the next one. Was it sex work? That should be a little bit more interesting, right? Because you're going to, you're going to moralize at me because you're a conservative, right? So it's like wrong for, for the, for the pussy to be out there. Oh, Ian, I would actually not like to continue this because it seems you're not going to be legitimate here. <laughs> oh man, really? And so you're just going to continue to start on... Down in round class. one? So I, accept, I accept your concession. <laughs> Dude, wait, wait. Really quickly, really quickly. I just want to say, I think you have a very healthy way of looking at the world because it's very clear there is absolutely no information that could penetrate your skull and keep you like from recognizing that uh, you, like, you, like, you got blown the fuck out. You're going to go right back to your Insta friends and circle jerk about how I got annihilated, but nobody is convinced but the people who already hated me, dude. That's why you're never going to grow out of your bubble, and in a year, I'm going to be three times the size I am now because I'm actually capable of recognizing when I fucked up, look at it, and learn from it. I hope you're pretty young. I hope one day you're able to do that too. Uh, in the meantime, try not to send any more porn to 16-year-olds uh, because your accusations of a pedo might be a meme, but your illegal behavior isn't, okay? Just be careful. So, uh, I'm sure you would know a lot about penetration because there's plenty of minors out there that would... <laughs> you want to you wanna shout out your Insta? Want to wanna slide on out of here? I'll let you go ahead. 
Oh wait, I'm not gonna shout at your Insta. <laughs> shout, everyone knows my channel. You want You can go ahead. I'll I'll give you I'll give you that. No, I mean you can go ahead and end the call if you'd like. Oh yeah, okay, uh, sure. Bye. <laughs> Ah, uh. <laughs> uh, hyena, you were right. It could not last. Whoo, shit. Oh, that was so much fun. Holy shit. Oh. <laughs> uh.